हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू इंजीनियरिंग ट्यूटोरियल सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी जस्ट डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट रिलेटेड टू स्ट्रेस स्ट्रेन डिफॉर्मेशन टेस्टिंग ऑफ मटेरियल्स एंड वी जस्ट गॉट अ क्विक आइडिया अबाउट हाउ द स्ट्रेस स्ट्रेन रिलेशनशिप इज एंड वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द uh stress strain curve just in short uh like i said in the this video we are going to analyze the stress strain curve at different points the various points on the stress strain curve and all the associated concepts so if you have not watched that video uh, please watch that video uh, the previous videos uh in which i have discussed about the basic introductory concepts and all the other things so let us just have a quick look on stress and strain we have covered it but still just to uh, go systematically stress is the pressure applied per unit area on a material or the load applied per unit area on a material during any mechanical operation and this application of pressure on the material causes deformation or change in the length and cross sectional area which is called as strain now the mathematical expression of stress is force per unit cross sectional area sigma equals to f by a and strain is the ratio between the change in length as compared to the original length the unit of stress is newton per meter square pascal or pounds per square inch and strain is unitless but sometimes units such as meter per meter or inches per inches units are used now the behavior of the materials when during the tensile test which is uh, the testing which is done on the material to determine its tensile strength ductility uh, modulus of elasticity and all those things the behavior of the material during that test can be divided into two categories okay elasticity and plasticity so the tensile test is carried out during uh, using the tensile testing machine which looks something like this it consists of two jaws which hold the test piece of uniform cross section and this machine tries to pull the test piece from both ends in opposite direction okay tensile stress tensile force and because of this there will be a deformation of this type an increase in length elongation and as a result of that a reduction in the cross sectional area of this test piece this is the initial this is the final elongation increase in length and decrease in cross sectional area and uh, the amount of stress is it is controlled in older days it was used during uh, using pneumatic uh, hydraulic mechanisms today it is used using electrical mechanisms or still pneumatic hydraulic are also used and it is controlled by the computer so elasticity and plasticity so when stress is applied on the material naturally it will undergo deformation but when the stress is removed if the material returns back to its original form okay this material is under stress if after the removal of stress it returns back to its initial state then the material is called as elastic material or it exhibits the property of elasticity now if it does not return back to its original shape and this deformation this change in shape and size is permanent then it is called as plasticity okay plastic material okay the material uh, it exhibits plastic properties okay it is not a polymer plastic it is not that it is the property of plasticity okay so these behaviors are exhibited during the tensile test as i said now the stress strain it obeys a certain relationship which is 
shown using this curve which is the stress strain curve okay which is stress here is in the vertical axis or the y axis and strain is in the horizontal axis or x axis so starting from o the curve follows various points m n p q r s now these points m here is the proportionality limit n is the elastic limit p and q are the upper and lower yield points r is the ultimate strength and s is the point of dislocation now let us analyze each of these points in detail now this portion as you can see here starting from o to m it is a straight line passing through the origin so in this portion om also mn2 the material it exhibits a linear relationship between stress and strain that is stress is directly proportional to strain so it obeys hooke's law stress applied is directly proportional to the strain produced in the material sigma is directly proportional to epsilon stress is directly proportional to strain or we can write it as stress is equal to c multiplied with strain where c is the constant of proportionality sigma is equal to c epsilon now this constant of proportionality c is called as stiffness constant or the modulus of elasticity or young's modulus so in this region om okay once the stress is removed the material can return back to its original state almost immediately okay in this range om now in the portion mn when the stress is removed the material will return back to its original dimension into original form but it will happen after some period of time so this portion mn the stress in this portion causes temporary deformation okay it is temporary deformation because the material returns back to its original state but after some period of time but during uh, but in the region om after the removal of stress the material returns back to its original state almost immediately Do, in the portion mn it takes some time now stiffness constant as i said uh it is the proportionality constant in the linear region which obeys hooke's law and is called as modulus of elasticity or young's modulus and as a unit of newton per meter square or pascal now the stiffness constant val values for different uh, materials uh, some common materials we have taken it has these values okay now the proportionality limit m and elastic limit n so m the point here indicates the maximum stress after the removal of which the material can return back to its initial state almost immediately n is the maximum stress the point n is the maximum stress after the removal of which the material will return back to its original state but after a certain period of time okay these are the proportional limit and elastic limit so the point n is the maximum point of elasticity beyond this the elastic property of material goes away within this range on the material has the possibility of returning back to its original state it may happen for a, uh, after a certain period of time it will return beyond this the plastic uh, the elastic behavior of material goes away so now the points p q r and s so before discussing that we have to discuss about some other parameters such as yield strength and tensile strength so yield strength is defined as the resistance or opposition shown by the material to permanent deformation due to various forces okay here we are discussing about the tensile stress but let us just discuss yield strength along with it it is the resistance shown by the material to permanent deformation permanent deformation means material cannot return back to its original state because of various uh, uh, forces such as shearing bending compressive forces now we have already discussed about the various forces in the previous videos the various types of stress which acts on the material 
then the tensile strength. The tensile strength is the maximum stress of the material under stress, the tensile stress, okay, this stress, tensile force. So, it is calculated by dividing the maximum tensile load on the material with the original cross-sectional area, okay. So, that is the tensile strength. So, the yield strength and tensile strength values of different materials is shown here. So, the unit is in megapascal, okay, yield strength and tensile strength. Now, the yield points P and Q or the lower and upper yield points P and Q, okay. So, P is uh, slightly higher, Q is slightly lower. So, P and Q, what do these points indicate? So, yield points are those points at which the increase in strain is much higher, the rate of increase in strain as compared to the increase in stress is higher. It means a small increase in stress causes a large increase in strain, okay. So this is the, this, this is, uh, happens at the yield points P and Q. P is slightly higher, here they just look like they are at the same. Uh, you know points, but Q is slightly lower and P is slightly higher. Okay, P is slightly higher. So at P and Q, the strain produced is higher as compared to the stress. So beyond these points, the rate of increase of strain will be higher as compared to the stress. Okay, yield points. So there are two yield points in the curve: upper lead point P and lower lead point Q. Then rupture strength. So Rupture strength here is the ultimate strength also. Now, the rupture strength can be defined as the load applied on the material at the point of disintegration or fracture or uh, the dislocation of the material divided by the original cross-sectional area. So, after this point, the change in the dimension that is elongation or deformation continues even with lesser values of stress or lesser loads. So, rupture strength is obtained by dividing the load at the time of fracture, okay, disintegration with the original cross sectional area. So, the points R and S come into play here, okay, the ultimate strength and the point of dislocation where rupture or the fracture happens. Now, the percentage of elongation, okay, because of this tensile force on this test material, it undergoes elongation, uh, increase in length and as a result, a decrease in cross-sectional area, okay. So, this increase in length, the percentage of change in length, it can be calculated by this formula. The final length at the time of fracture or up to the point of fracture minus the initial length or the original length divided by the initial length into 100 that is the percentage of elongation. Then the reduction of cross sectional area an increase in length means a decrease in the cross sectional area as it is shown this is the initial state okay the original state this is the final state. So, naturally you can see there is an increase in length and decrease in cross, uh, cross sectional area as compared to this. So, the reduction in area can be calculated or the percentage of area reduction can be calculated as the initial area or the original area minus the final area at the time of fracture divided by the initial area into 100. So, this is the percentage of area reduction. So, here we have discussed the various points on the stress strain curve and we have analyzed them and also the various associated parameters, okay, uh, so such as yield strength, tensile strength, the values of uh, various uh, materials in terms of yield strength and tensile strength. So, I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much